I had a mat, I'd definitely be using it. But it's okay, man. I'm cool without it. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to lie down flat on your stomach. Okay? Keep your head up just a little bit so you can breathe and your nose doesn't get crushed. I think that'll be a natural thing. What we're going to do is we're going to start out with the letter Y, and then T, and then A, and if that is like enough, like you'll know, you listen to your body, then you can stop with those ones, okay, and then go through like two or three sets, all right? If you feel you can push it a little bit more, I'll show you two other things you can do in addition to those three, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the A's, and we're going to lift up for five counts, all right, we're going to go to the letter T here. I'm sorry, this is Y. Letter T for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the letter A for 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right, we're going to go back up here again for A, or for Y, for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Another thing we can add to it, is a push uh, press here, a press, um, military press, all right, just 90 degrees on the elbows, and they're level with the shoulders on the way down, and another thing which is super hard, which is excellent to do, and it's not just excellent to do because it's hard, okay, but the reason why it's hard is because most of us are weak in this area, and it's another stabilizing exercise, it's an external rotation, and we're going to lift up, okay, for three, two, and one. Now that's tough, okay? So we're going to put that whole sequence together, all right? We're going to go up with a Y for five, four, three, two, and one. Letter T for five, four, three, two, and one. And letter A for three, two, and one. So I feel like I can do a, a press, so I'm going to do that for three. We're going to exhale, exhale, that was the last one. And then external rotation, okay? For five, four, three, two, and one. We're going to stop that there. Excellent for the shoulders. You're going to feel that. You're going to get stronger. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the next thing, which is going to be a bridge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn right around on my back, okay? Feet are going to be on the floor. A bridge is great because you can do a bridge without any weight. Okay, and if you're not, if you're new to this, I like to put my hands up whenever I can, palms out. You're going to lift up, okay, and try to keep this tucked under. And you can hold it here for five counts as you exhale and bring it back down as you inhale. Okay, so this is the beginner version. If this is too easy to do, you have a couple of options, okay. Option number one is you get yourself a pair of dumbbells and you put them right here. And the heavier um, they can be, they'll work out these muscles more. But again, be safe. Make sure you can do this form right. You're tucking under and you're feeling it in the rear end. Okay? You can also put your hands on your thighs if you feel like the backs of your thighs are talking to you too much. Okay? The other thing you could do, instead of putting dumbbells or some kind of weight here, is to just use one foot going up. And I like to keep it parallel with the other leg, okay? Not way up here, but this way, because that's going to add more tension all through the hips. And it's going to make this one do the work, okay? I want to keep my pelvic bones nice and straight on the way up, so I'm going to feel that. And see, this one's going to want to tip down. But I'm going to put it back up, and I have to use this leg to do it. And if you try this, it is really, really tough, okay? And you're really working that rear end. Exhale, going up. Inhale, down. Okay? Again, you're going to shoot for like 8 to 12 of these and switching sides. If it feels like you can go on and on, you either check your form or else it's time to try the next harder thing which would be, you know, like if you have a big ball, like those big Swiss balls, like that yellow one you might see in the corner. You'd need one that's a little bit bigger. I'm adjusting here, see? This, this one wants to fly down, drop down. Um, you can do your, your bridges on the ball by just having your back or your, your upper back and your head on the ball and your feet on the floor 
And, you know, you could again do two legs or one leg if you're on the ball. Um, that's really, really tough. So those are the options with that. Next thing we're going to do is move into bicycles, which is going to work, you know, the front of the midsection and the side. So it's get, it gets the rectus abdominis and the obliques fired up. It's a really great one to do. I'm going to show you how to do it right, okay, because a lot of people go through this way too fast and it's not effective. I'm going to lift the head up a little bit, never pulling, never, never pulling on the head with the hands. The knees are going to be right above each hip, okay? The knees are never going to come closer, okay, to the, to the head. They're, this is as close as I'm letting them get, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate over to one side. Again, my elbows are pointing straight out to the side here. They're not doing this because that's just my body's way. If I do this, it's like sort of cheating, okay? It makes it think that it's working through here when really it's the shoulder, Okay, so I'm rotating over and I'm pushing this leg out as I meet this knee. And again, the knee's not coming any closer. And then I go back to the center, rotate and push out to the other side. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Okay, now, so you may only be able to do eight of these, or you might be able to do 15 to 20. If you're going beyond 20, I'd recommend that you slow it down when you're coming down toward the floor. Okay, that works a different phase called the eccentric phase, and it engages more muscle tissue to work, makes it much more difficult and very effective in terms of burning a lot of calories. Going slowly down. Still the breathing is the same. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Real good. Now, before we do our four points, which is an awesome thing, I want you to do that, I'm just going to hug one knee to my chest, and I'm going to let the other leg go flat so I get a little bit of a hip flexor stretch in here. A little bit of a stretching through the glute and the hamstrings. And, um, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull a little bit. Okay, get that knee a little bit straighter, get the hamstrings a little more stretchy. Okay, you could do all kinds of stretches from this position. And a nice one to do is actually inner thigh. You know why? Because I'm tight there. So I'm just going to stretch it. I did this awesome workout yesterday morning. And I am feeling it. It's all like real tight right through there, which is, you know, a good place to be tight at, I guess, you know. But I need to stretch it, so I don't want to, I don't want to keep myself tight, because that's not good. Okay, so i got to stretch that out. So I'm going to let my leg go, you know, to the side. I'm trying to keep this hip down. Another thing I could do is grab a towel and put it around this ankle, and I'll have a little bit more give as far as pulling it down and stuff like that. I'm going to go to the other side here, hug the knee to the chest. Ooh, am I tight in that glute? Holy moly. I'm pulling that. That's a nice stretch. It's good for the hip flexor. I can keep this leg straight. And I'm just going to pull it out to the side. Again, I don't know if you can see this okay, but, you know, trust me there. The, the leg is still attached <laughs> from the knee down if you can't see it. Okay. Just work it a little bit here, get it nice and stretchy. If I had a towel around my ankle, I'd have a little more give. I'm trying to keep this leg and hip planted. Okay. Woo. 